Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to use this study to talk about a specific point, and that point is why I believe patients who have undergone a thyroidectomy or have undergone radioactive iodine ablation need T3 medication in addition to their T4 medication. And to discuss this topic, I want to I want to go over this this study here, and I'm going to try and explain it really in a simple way and we're going to show some graphs and explain why I think this is the case and why I think a lot of people who have uh, who have had their thyroids removed or damaged from radioactive iodine uh, are suffering unnecessarily and it has to do with the approach to treatment. Now this study was back in 2011 so you know it's seven years old at this at this time maybe oh yeah pretty close seven years maybe and some change um, and let's talk about the title here so it says levothyroxine monotherapy cannot guarantee euthyroidism in all athyreotic patients. So don't let that this long fancy title confuse you. What it is saying is using levothyroxine alone, which is a T4 medication like Synthroid, cannot guarantee a normal thyroid state in patients who have had their thyroid removed. That's what athyreotic means. It means the patients have been removed. Euthyroidism means normal thyroid function. And then of course, levothyroxine monotherapy means using it by itself can't guarantee this state okay so this is kind of a kind of an interesting claim because it flies in the face of all of the information that you are probably you know the information that you've been fed and kind of probably your understanding of how the thyroid works after you've had it removed and so on um, but we have a big problem and that's why I want to talk about it and the problem is that many well we'll, we'll just we'll explain it here so basically why do doctors use T4 medication by itself to treat patients who have had um, their thyroids removed or, or damaged from RAI. And the reason is because they believe that when you take levothyroxine, that the body will convert it to the T3 that it needs. Now, most doctors know, they, they just assume that this is going to happen no matter what. They just make this assumption, um, even though they know that in the body, when you normally have a thyroid, your thyroid gland produces both T4 and T3. But when they take it out, they only ever give you the T4 back. And they make this assumption. They say, well, we know that, well, this is them speaking. We know that giving you T4, um, that your body will take that T4 and turn it into the amount of T3 that it needs. And they just make that assumption and they kind of wash their hands clean. They base the T4 off of the TSH and they call it a day. They try and make it that simple. Now, there's a big problem with that. And that is this study, which shows that about 20%, in fact, more than 20%, even though they have a normal TSH, do not have or maintain normal free thyroid hormone levels in their bloodstream. And that's really, really, really important because when we look at TSH, it's not because of what TSH does to the body when we look at hormones. In fact, all of the actions of thyroid hormone don't come from TSH. They come from free T3 and free T4. It would be like me checking your testosterone, and instead of looking at your testosterone, I would be looking at your LH and your FSH and then making assumptions based off of those as to how testosterone is working. It's, it's a really weird kind of silly way of looking at it, but, but the moral of the story is if you have a low amount of thyroid of, of free hormone, whether it's thyroid hormone or testosterone, it's simply not going to do the job that it needs to in its body. So we know from the study that more than 20% of people, so that's one out of five people at least, who have had their thyroid removed, even though they have a normal TSH, still have low free T3 and free T4 levels, which means that there's going to be a low amount of thyroid hormone available to start, you know, um, for the body to utilize um, in the bloodstream. So that's sort of the, the crux of this entire study. And I want to go to one more I want to go to and show you this image here um, and sort of explain this. And so what we have here is I, I want to compare what these images do is they compare uh, normal patients, healthy patients who have had their thyroid or who have it and it's working and functioning to those people who have had their thyroid removed, which is all the thyroidectomy patients. And so on this graph, you can see the solid line right here. This is the, the healthy thy euthyroid controls, which means just means normal healthy patients. The dashed line up here are the patients who have had who don't have a thyroid who are being treated with T4. Okay. And then on the X axis you have the TSH. And then on the Y axis you have their free T4. And we're going to do the same thing down here, but I want to start up here first. So you would expect and, and hopefully you understand this that as you take thyroid medication, your TSH will go down. And you would expect, if you're taking T4, that the T4 would slightly go up. 
So that's why you see down here. So, so you can see the TSH is high over here and it goes low this way. So as the TSH gets lower, we would expect the free T4 to go up if you're taking T4 medication, right? And so we see that with the healthy controls. Now, they're not taking thyroid medication, but you see that even though their TSH goes down, they, that healthier people have a higher level of T4. Okay, so that makes perfect sense. We, we agree. I, hopefully everyone's on the same page. Now let's look at those patients who are given thyroid hormone replacement after they have had their thyroid removed. So we look at them. The higher their TSH is, meaning the lower amount of medication they're on, um, the lower their free T4 is. But as we give them more T4, we would expect it to go up and their TSH to go down. And that's exactly what we see. So not, not necessarily a problem there. And if we look at these values, the free T, the LT4, or I'm sorry, the free T4 is higher in the patients who don't have a thyroid than, than those who do have a thyroid, which is kind of strange. But now let's look at, and then we're going to put this into context, we're going to, we're going to um, compare that to free T3. So remember, free T3 does all of the, the work that, of thyroid hormone in the body. T4 is really only there because it needs to be converted to T4 through the T4 to T3 conversion. Now again, doctors know this, but they, they assume that the body will take the T4 that it needs and turn it directly into T3. All right, so now that you have this into context, you can you hopefully understand that this image we're about to look at is the most important image because it has to do with the amount of T3. So even if you're taking T4, it doesn't matter unless it's being churned into T3. So let's look and see how well patients who don't have a thyroid when they're given T4 medication actually turn it into T3. So again, we have on the on the x-axis down here, we have TSH. On the y-axis, we have free T3. The, the healthy amount of controls is going to be this black line, and the dash line is going to be the patients who are um, taking T4 medication um, who have had their thyroids removed or don't have it. So again, well, this what's interesting here when we look at the healthy controls is that regardless of their TSH, they have a very stable free T3 level. It's very stable. Just it doesn't really move regardless of what their TSH is. So in that, in what we can gather from this is that the T4 can use as a buffer. So your body, even if the T, T4 gets higher, the body will still keep the amount of conversion the same. And that's kind of what doctors think. But the problem is this, that only works when the body is functioning appropriately. But when we give patients T4 medication, what we see is something entirely different. So as we give, doctors assume that, that they make this assumption that you are going to match this line right here. If you don't have a thyroid and you're taking T4 medication, that you're going to match this line. Right away, you see that that's not the case. Um, so let's look at this. So as you take T4 medication, you would expect your body to convert some of that T4 to T3, and you would expect it to rise, right? I think everyone's in agreement. We, we, expect, that, we expect to see that. But here's the big problem. Even though that happens a little bit as you take T4, you still never get to this top area. So if you look at here, we can say that the free T3 range for the healthy person is about 4.5, and we're only getting to about maybe around 4 or so. So that's a big difference when you consider that you know down here is 3.5 and here's 4.5. This is about a 50% reduction from what it should be um, taking T4 medication alone. So it's way lower than it should be, um, even when the TSH gets very, very, very low. So there's no possible way that as a thyroid, as a patient who doesn't have a thyroid, that your T3 is ever going to get to the healthier range that it needs to be taking T4 medication alone. All right, so that's what this study is trying to prove. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that you can get around that by taking T3 medication. Okay, so what you can do is you can actually take T3 medication such as liothyronine or cytomel in addition to your T4 and you can attempt to mimic the same amount of thyroid that is produced naturally from your thyroid gland. And that is what I, that is how I see the best success in patients who have had their thyroid removed from a thyroidectomy um, and in those who have had their thyroid destroyed from radioactive iodine ablation. And I would also include in this category pretty much anybody who, who doesn't have a functioning thyroid for any reason. That includes those people who have end-stage um, atrophy of the thyroid gland from Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So moral of this story is that in order to get, in order to obtain normal and healthy free T3 levels, you must take more than just T4. Now this isn't true of everyone, but this is true in at least 20% of patients, which is a massive amount of people, about one in five. So if you are one of those one in five people who has had their thyroid removed, still feeling poorly, even though your TSH is normal, you need to be looking at your free T3 levels. Um, I would also recommend you look at your free T4 levels, and you also need to potentially use T3 medication in addition to your T4. And when you do that, you will see your T3 go up to this normal healthy level, and you'll have a lot of your problems resolved. You'll probably experience less fatigue, and you'll start to lose weight, and yeah, you'll, you won't suffer from constipation or brain fog or all of those symptoms of hypothyroidism. 
Okay, so that was, um, hopefully that makes a lot of sense. If you have any questions about it, especially if you've had your thyroid removed and you're feeling really poorly about it or just don't understand what you need to be doing, leave your, your questions or comments below and I'll do my best to get to all of those. Um, and always, uh, as always, if you've enjoyed this uh, video, um, please leave a comment, like, or, or subscribe. And um, otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.